Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I have a very pleasant 77 degrees, mostly cloudy, a couple little raindrops coming down. Beautiful day. I can be outside a little bit, still covered up, of course, but pretty nice day. And it's been a little while since I've been up here in the shop, and I was up here doing a little organization which it needed greatly. <laughs> and then I took a look at the battery log. Yeah, I saw a couple issues. So up here in the shop, this is what I call the blue wall because I have so many blue Victron devices. Got the MPPT-130, the Phoenix 12 volt 800 watt pure sine wave inverter. Got the smart shunt, the dongle, Everything that one would need to monitor the state of charge of everything and how everything is working together. And this works very well. And I've had this battery here, and that's the VoltGo 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And it's been up here for months hooked up. Uh, haven't really been using this system very much at all. It's just going up to float every single day. But let's look at the log and I'll show you what I found. So looking at the app for the solar charge controller right there, we can see that I am in absorption. Uh, it's only allowing in 19 watts off of a 400 watt array right now. Looking pretty good, right? Don't see anything weird there. Uh, it was back in the history where I'm starting to look more and more on these. As those of you that have been following the channel know I had to balance a couple of batteries, those two small red Odo batteries, and we put a, a longer, lower voltage balance on that to get that to behave. I think I'm going to do the same thing here. I mean, if you look, here's a week's worth. You can see we're getting up to uh, float every single day because I haven't been up here doing anything. But then on a closer look, you know, you go back one, two, three, four, five days ago, there's a 16.25 volt spike and the lowest was a 13.09 volt. So yeah, the, the BMS obviously kicked in momentarily like they are meant to do. And then, you know, the day before looked fine. The day before that, there's a 16.12. And if we just keep scrolling back further in time, you know, looks good most days, right? Goes up to the 14.2 target. And then uh, what's this one say it is uh, 12 days ago? Uh, there's another 16. Same thing. A few days of 14.2. Keep scrolling back and now we're getting into you know, a month's worth or so. What's that one? 20 days ago, there's a 16.8. Uh, there's a 15.9, a 16. So the two days in a row, BMS obviously kicked in. Now, this battery's been up here, like I said, for months hooked up. Haven't really been up here working that much. So haven't used, used anything but extremely light loads lately. But it makes me think, there's a slight balancing issue going on here in that in that battery. And then right here, 28 and 29 days ago, uh, as you can see from the log, go right down there. Yeah, or I guess 27 and 28 days ago. But yeah, a couple more days in a row. And then, you know, and then it just acts fine for a couple of days. And... So there's a pattern there. There's a pattern that uh, I think we can remedy. And we're going to do the same thing on this system as I did on that other system that really balanced those two batteries in parallel together. I'd like to see this uh, not deviating uh, at all. You know, let's just let's just get it 14.2 straight across and, and quit getting these BMS cutoff spikes. So I'm already in absorption uh, for the day. Uh, let's see how long has it been in well it actually shows a little bit is that today or yesterday no that's today uh says it's been in float for 28 minutes maybe it kicked out since i've been up here turning stuff on but 
Uh, anyway, I want to go back in here and I'm going to do the same thing on this that I did on that other pair of batteries. And that's, I'm going to lower the voltage from that 14.2 volt spike, like a lot of you guys recommended to me, and that worked very well. And I just, I dropped it down to 14 even on that for several days and would let the absorption go for like five hours instead of on this, it's preset for two hours the way it is currently. So here I've gone into the settings. I'm going to turn on expert mode instead of I got it currently set for smart lithium iron phosphate, which has all the presets, which actually work very well for me. And then you have to press OK because it's cautioning you that uh, the defaults work well, which they do. But uh, we want to change the absorption voltage right here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drop it down to 14 even. 14 volts like it's like so and press OK and then on the absorption time instead of the the two hours you know that it is preset for at that 14.2 volt target I'm going to change that and I'm going to run that on up to five hours as well and then press OK. OK, so now we've got it 14, 14 volts right there for five hours. Going right back to the status page, now we have 18 watts coming in and the battery voltage is 14 volts exactly. So uh, should be able to go ahead and get the first five hours today like that and do a little, a real slow uh, balancing. It must be just a slight little imbalance in one of those cells. Nothing drastic, you know, but I don't want that BMS activating if it doesn't have to. So let's take a peek of right there, back there, blinking in the background as the smart shunt. Let's take a look at that and see if it has any clues about what's been going on. So right there, it's reading the, the current voltage at 14 volts, which we just reset it to. And this is the history on the smart shunt right here. And yeah, look right here, we go down to minimum battery voltage, 10.63 volts, maximum 17.08. So yeah, there's, there's something going on here, right? Uh, we should be able to remedy that. Because after I rebalance that set that I showed you guys the other day on the deck, I mean, it's absolutely perfect. I, it's just doing exactly as it should. I don't see any weird spikes. BMS hasn't activated at all. And then going back to the trends part of the smart shunt log. Yeah, look at this right here. Yeah. And like I said, I, and this is from two weeks ago. So just like it showed in the, in the history part, you know, most days looking pretty good. And then for whatever reason, one day, I don't know if it's like a cloud break, uh, causing this, but, uh, it shouldn't be doing that. Cause that says, you know, I mean, down here it's between 42 and 58 percentile momentarily and then of course it sh shoots right back up but yeah and this is going back for 30 days here so we can see another one uh, obviously the BMS kicking in for whatever reason uh, makes me suspicious of an imbalanced cell in there so hopefully we won't see any more of this kind of a thing after I get this battery uh, sitting in absorption for five hours for the next few days at 14 volts. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and do like I did on that other set. I'll kick it up after a few days of what it's set at now and, uh, and then bring it up uh, slowly back up to 14.2.
and see if it doesn't just completely remedy that situation. And here I am back in the, the history, uh, the most recent history on the charge controller right here. So yeah, this is what I want to see if we can not be getting any more of these 16 volt spikes. And it's been, you know, pretty consistently every every few days for whatever reason in the in the past month for sure so uh i will i will definitely do a, a quick follow-up on this to see if it remedies just like it did on those other two batteries i'm pretty confident it will and the only reason that this is right now taking you know 19 watts to hold it at 14 volts is because i do have uh, the inverter is on, I'm running a light, I'm charging a couple of devices, because if I turn the inverter off and all of that, you see, boom, it drops down to allowing one watt in off that 400 watt array to hold it at 14 volts. So that's the only reason it was taking uh, 19 at the moment for those of you interested and inverter and light back on and goes right back to 19 watts okay so yeah ever since that that worked for those other two batteries that we looked at the other day i've been going around and looking at all the other systems to make sure back in the logs that there was nothing weird going on and then i hadn't been up here for a little while and had the time to sit down and actually look at everything but um, yeah, then I caught those little spikes. So uh, yeah, I think that'll balance right out and I'll let you guys know how that goes, but I'm pretty confident. And thanks as always to you guys for uh, leading me in the right direction as always. And in the meantime, I have these two ready to go for uh, that other system we're gonna build here when uh, everything get coordinated to do that. Let's just take a look. They've been sitting in parallel uh, for quite some time. 13.3 uh, there. 13.3 there as well. So yeah, that's just a 200 amp hour battery right now. Two 100s tied together in parallel. And then right next to it. Uh, you know, I did just put the multimeter on this. I got a a 53.1 volt reading. Uh, so here's what I'm thinking. I had every intention of coming and tearing this apart and going step by step on a few things and letting you guys help me. But now I'm thinking before I do that, before I dive into this, I'm going to put the same uh, deep absorption kind of a charge on this. So I'll switch out that 48 volt that I'm using, uh, cart this down to the house, put this in there and do a real slow and, you know, let it do it for a week and see if I can't revive this thing as well. All right, you guys, thanks for tuning in as always. Uh, yeah, I'm busy trying to put together a bunch of videos for you guys. Really want to get that power queen up and running again. And, and I never did do that, you know, super long, deep, absorption at a lower voltage with that to see if that wouldn't balance what is obviously uh, an imbalanced cell in there as well so yeah i gotta try that it's just i might have to lug that down on the hand cart here but yeah i'm gonna probably hook that up later today and i'll keep filming how it goes and get right back with you guys and then if that does not work yeah, we're going to tear that thing apart all right, hope things are good in your neck of the woods. Things are just fine out here, doing good, catching up on a lot of projects. In paradise, 808. <laughs> Aloha, everybody. Yeah, these are the type of days I can get outside work done, too. You know, it's not blistering sun. Uh, good for, for me to get out here, and, and I have been tackling the jungle. And let me ask you guys this question, too, because I've been thinking about this for a while since I've uh, been remedying uh, some balancing issues. Do you think it's worth it going ahead and, and doing one of these uh, lower voltage 
longer, slower absorption period periods, you know, every once a year or something like that, just to keep everything going along. I looked at the chins, which I've been running the longest, uh, as you guys know, everything looks good. But what about just shutting that system down, giving it a break and doing that for a few days? Drop it down just low and slow for a while? Yeah, it seems like maybe that would be a good idea. I really don't know. All right.